A couple of days ago, I took delivery and got my first look at the Dell XPS 15 9520, all new for 2022. And very, very good stuff, people. I love its premium design. It's not a revolutionary upgrade in terms of the design, and that's a good thing. As the old adage says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's a sleek and modern look with its infinity edge display. They sent me the 3.5K OLED display, same as last year, which is a good thing as well. But it now has 12th gen processors. It's got faster RAM, faster storage, and better battery life. These are the things we wanna see, especially under the hood. Let's find out if this all comes together to make this worth your money. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell XPS 15 9520 here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, pricing starts at $14,2002 over at Dell's website. That's the entry-level model with only UHD graphics. I don't think I would go with that one. I would go with something with a discrete GPU option. There are a couple of there that you might want to choose from. And the unit that I have here today, which is pretty specced out nicely, which has a Core i7 12700H processor. It also has the OLED display. It's a 3.5K OLED display, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and 512 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. And that comes in at around $2,350. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And the good news is they're showing a shipping date in around the second week of June. So that's pretty good in terms of stock supply and getting it into the hands of the consumer. I already unboxed this two nights ago live on the channel. There is a replay up on my channel. For those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. Pretty interesting stuff. And as far as the packaging is concerned, very premium, very high end, as we've come to expect with the XPS line. This is no exception. You get some documentation, which includes some warranty information and a setup guide. You also get the adapter just like you did last year. You get a USB-A and an HDMI port, and it connects via Type-C, of course. And you get a 130-watt power adapter, and it's pretty compact. And they also give you the extension cord as well. And there's the XPS 15. Now, this is going to be with the black carbon fiber. It's the silver. They will be having white. I don't know if it's available just yet but it's supposedly coming according to my source at Dell. And then of course, we got the unit itself in plastic. And she is a beauty. I, don't, I never get tired of the Dell XPS 15 uh, as far as first time unboxing these devices. These are premium devices. It's an all metal design. Again, super premium, very rock solid in terms of the build. And at 4.31 pounds or 1.96 kilograms for this particular model with the OLED display, an 86 watt hour battery, very portable, especially for a 15 inch laptop. Really great to take with you on the go. Now the ports are exactly the same as last year's 9510. On the left side is a Kensington lock port and two Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function. They support data, charge, and display out. Moving over to the right side is a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that supports display port and power delivery. Next to that is a full-size SD card reader. And finally, a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack to round out the ports on this laptop. Of course, you don't get an HDMI port. You don't get a USB-A port. That's why they do include that adapter in the box. Now, to get inside this laptop, there are eight T5 Torx screws. You need to unscrew them, remove them, and use a guitar pick or a pry tool, work around the edges, and remove the bottom plate. Now, take your time. It is on there pretty tight. You don't want to break anything. You don't want to scratch anything because it can get scratched pretty easily. But once you do that, you remove the bottom plate, you're in, and you are able to upgrade the RAM. Now, this is running DDR5 4800 RAM. 
There are two memory modules that you can upgrade, of course. So that means it's running in dual channel mode and you can go up to 64 gigabytes or at least configure it with up to 64 gigabytes according to Dell's website. Now there are two SSD slots for you to upgrade as well in terms of the storage. Now, as you can see from these reads and writes, the included 512 gigabyte SSD has gen four speeds as you can see by these excellent results. Now this has Intel Killer Wi-Fi 6, 1675, and Bluetooth 5.2 when it comes to wireless. It's not upgradable, meaning it's soldered into the motherboard, but the results are pretty good as far as the Bluetooth and the wireless is concerned. No issues on that front so far. And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has the 86 watt hour battery. That's the bigger battery option that it comes with. And I gotta say, I did my first battery test with it so far, and you're seeing about a 70% increase of battery life year over year from the 9510 to the 9520. The 9520 did 12 hours and two minutes on my continuous web surfing test, whereas last year's 9510 did eight hours and 19 minutes on that same test. So a nice increase, better efficiency, and of course, better battery life with this 12 gen processor and i think you're looking at anywhere between eight to nine hours of real world mixed usage but of course your mileage may vary as everybody's use case is a little bit different please keep that in mind and the included 130 watt usb-c charger takes about an hour and 45 minutes to give you a full charge not too bad and when it comes to performance, the benchmark numbers are looking good, outpacing last year's Core i9-11900H that I had in my personal unit, the 9510. Here, the Core i7-12700H definitely had better multi-core performance and single-core performance, for that matter, over last year's model. And it comes as no surprise that the 3D Mark scores, the Time Spy and Fire Strike scores, are very similar. That's because these are both running the same GPU, the RTX 3050 Ti, a 45 watt variant. And when I'm looking at these numbers, I'm seeing about a 35 to 40 percent increase from 11th gen to 12th gen year over year. That's pretty significant when you think about it, going from really good multi-core performance to even better multi-core performance. The same could be said on the single core as well. And it was 64% faster to render a 10-minute Premiere Pro video in 4K H.264. That's pretty impressive. Now, I want to make it very clear, this is not a gaming laptop. There are better options out there if that's what you want to do as your main thing with this laptop. But you can get playable frame rates on certain settings and certain titles as evidenced by these playable frame rate numbers you see on your screen. However, I want to stress, if you're looking for AAA titles on their highest settings, don't look at this laptop. There are dedicated gaming laptops. They're going to be a better bang for your buck. This is not what this is meant to do. And they give you the different thermal profiles in the My Dell settings here. And as you can see, the ultra performance is where you're going to get the most performance out of it. That's where the fans will ramp up and kick in. But I have to say they've remained relatively quiet, even under the ultra performance mode under heavy load, which is great and much better than some of its competition. So far, so good as far as fan noise is concerned on this laptop. And speaking of the fan noise, never going above 47, 48 decibels, which actually was pretty good. And when it comes to the surface temperatures, it didn't get overly hot. There were a couple of hot spots you'll notice above the keyboard and on the underside, but never getting overly hot to the point where you can't touch it. Remain relatively cool. So that's been pretty good in terms of those surface temperatures. Now, as far as the core temperatures are concerned, it did reach 100 degrees Celsius, and then it would drop down to about 82 to 84 degrees Celsius, and the clock speeds would go down a little bit, so a little bit of thermal throttling in order to lower the temperatures, but not bad at all. I was actually expecting more thermal throttling than what was actually exhibited here. Not too bad, actually. Now, there are three display options that you can go with, an IPS Full HD Plus display, a UHD Plus display, also IPS, and the 3.5K OLED display, which is what we have here today. Now, this is an Infinity Edge Touch display, which gives you those really small bezels, giving it a sleek and modern look. And as with any OLED display, you get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, and the really high contrast that makes everything just pop off the display. It's pretty amazing. 
It's also a very color accurate display with a 0.57 Delta E score. Remember, anything below two is considered color accurate. This is excellent in that regard. And it also has great coverage of the color gamut. 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, 99% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 94% NTSC. So if you're a content creator that does Lightroom, Photoshop, color grading, video editing, this is an excellent panel to do those tasks. And when it comes to HDR or high dynamic range content, as you see here, this doesn't disappoint. It's been excellent so far. Watching movies on Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube have been fantastic. And I measured 400 nits in terms of screen brightness, exactly what Dell claims this display will get. And it's not very reflective. It has that anti-reflective coating on it, reducing the amount of glare and reflections, which you gotta love. And the touchscreen has been super responsive and having that touch display has been really convenient navigating through the OS. I like it a lot. So this is the front facing camera on the brand new Dell XPS 15 9520 here for 2022. We still have a 720p webcam, although I think it's slightly better than last year's model, the 9510, which also sported a 720p webcam. Now, this is an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Uh, a little bit of an improvement, I think, maybe. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. What do you think about the video quality and what do you think about the audio quality here in 2022? How does it stack up with a 1080p webcam? I am curious to know. And this is the webcam for the Dell XPS 15 9510 from 2021. What do you think about it when you compare it to the newest version, the 9520? I think a slight improvement on that 9520 over this one. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think? I am curious to know. I think we're definitely seeing an improvement on the audio as far as those microphones are concerned on this new version. And as far as the camera is concerned, like I said, maybe a slight improvement, maybe a little bit washed out, not as contrasty as the one in the 9510. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And just like last year's model, this is also a Windows Hello camera, an IR camera, allowing you to log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. It worked really well. And the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner working well, registering my finger each and every time I used it, and the setup was super easy as well. And just like last year's model, you can open the lid with one finger, and that's as far back as you're going to go as far as the screen angle is concerned. And just like last year's model, I'm really enjoying the keyboard. I like its tactility. I like its key travel. Really comfortable to type on for extended periods of typing. And here's what it sounds like. It also has a really nicely sized precision glass touchpad that worked really well. Two finger scrolling was very responsive and all the gestures work as you'd expect. All good on that front. I'm happy to report, at least with my review unit, that there are no issues with the touchpad in terms of a loose touchpad or any inadvertent clicks that were a problem in previous models. Happy to report that. And just like last year's model, the audio has been very good on this XPS 15 with a total of eight watts of power in its four speakers. There are two woofers and two tweeters. I thought the volume was good, mids were good, and bass was good. All were very good for a Windows laptop. Let's give it a listen. All right, let's bring it all home. So far, so good. 48 hours with the Dell XPS 15 9520 here for 2022 has been proved really positive. I like what they did here. It's not a revolutionary up upgrade in terms of the exterior. It's pretty much the same as the 9510 on the outside, but where you're going to see the big performance jump is under the hood. That's with that 12th gen processor. I'm seeing about 35 to 40% increase in both single core and multi-core performance year over year. Year, and that's been pretty good and also the 15.6 inch 3.5k oled display has been nothing but phenomenal it is great for watching hdr content love the fact that it's a touch display and has super thin bezels giving it a sleek and modern look and they love the fact there are two ram slots and two ssd slots for you to expand out the ram and storage 
And I love the fact we're getting good battery life, especially when you compare it to last year's model. And I'm really impressed with the quad speakers on this laptop filling up the room rather nicely. Now, the things I'm not crazy about are the fact that there's no USB-A port or HDMI port for that matter, although they do give you that adapter in the box. The wireless LAN is not upgradable, not a huge deal, but something to be aware of. And I still don't like the fact that there's no shutter switch for the webcam and they're still using a 720p webcam here in 2022, which they would have moved to 1080p. And it can get expensive, especially if you go with this OLED model or the 4K model and the upgraded processors that you can get with this. Although this is a flagship premium model at the end of the day, and I think the price is justified. Like I said, appearances can be deceiving. If you're looking at just the outside, it looks just like the 9510. But when you look under the hood, that's where the real changes are here. And I think they're big changes, especially if you want better multi-core and single core performance and much better battery life. I really like the Dell XPS 15 and it's going to earn my editor's choice for the 15 inch laptop category so far here for 2022. Definitely making it worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Dell XPS 15 9520 here for 2022? This is the platinum silver with that black carbon fiber deck. Love this design. The white version will be coming later according to my source at Dell. So those that want the Arctic white, that will be coming. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a USB-C port. Uh, you also get the adapter in the box that gives you an HDMI and a USB-A port. There's a full-size SD card reader. Uh, pretty much everything you'd want on a laptop. It's a flagship. The star of the show to me has to be once again that 3.5K OLED display. Still running at 60 hertz. Would have been nice to have a higher refresh rate. Probably next year, I guess we would anticipate that. But I think the biggest change with this so far is going to happen under the hood. That's because this is running that 12th gen processor, the Core i7-12700H, RTX 3050 Ti graphics, the 45 watt variant, same as last year, but we're seeing a 35 to 40% increase in performance, better multi-core and better single core performance out of this 12th gen processor over the 11th gen from last year. Very impressive. I also noticed much better battery life, about 70% better this time around. This got over 12 hours on my continuous web surfing test. You can expect anywhere from eight to nine hours. And for an OLED display, that's actually pretty good. So good job in that regard. It's more efficient. And I like the thermals on this, never getting overly hot in terms of the surface temperatures. And it didn't throttle that much. I was expecting to see a lot more thermal throttling. I didn't see it. So good performance, good efficiency, and good thermals. This is going to be really good for the one who wants to get creative work done, who wants to get a little bit of gaming in. Again, it's not a gaming laptop, but you can get playable frame rates, and who wants really good battery life. This is your ticket. You can actually get it pretty soon. It's available second week in June in certain terms of shipping is the last time I checked. Starting price at about $1,400, fully decked out. You're looking at about $3,000, but the unit that they sent over comes in around $2,300, $2,400 when it's all said and done. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.